operations are totally normal. Uh, nothing to report. Uh, we've been doing all of the COVID vaccination standbys at the former Channing Beat building in Deerfield, now known as the Treehouse Brewery building. Uh, they've been very generous in providing that space for the vaccination. So South County EMS has been there providing an ambulance paramedic standby. We are recording those hours, those expenses separately and providing them to the town of Deerfield for uh, reimbursement from MEMA. Uh, that's Deerfield is going to be doing that their own. I know some agencies in the county are billing uh, for COG directly. We are not doing that. That's all being handled by the town. So it's a town department. We're just forwarding my my staff hours and expenses over to them. There was a question uh, that was brought to me, I think it was last week sometime, maybe two weeks ago, asking about home vaccination um, for homebound people that are uh, eligible for the vaccination but can't get themselves to either the doctor's office, a pharmacy, or one of our clinics. And uh, there is a model, Amherst and Hadley um, have teamed up Amherst primarily, but with Hadley, and they're doing Amherst, Hadley, Pelham, Shutesbury, Leverett. I think they're doing all the neighboring towns to provide at-home vaccinations. Their model is a dedicated ambulance uh, with paramedics and a public health nurse. So the three of them traveling from house to house, they've got the logistics of scheduling those appointments separately, and they're doing basically one-hour blocks. So that gives them time to travel to the next person, do the paperwork, do the intake, set up provide the vaccination and then give a 15 to 30 minute observation period and then pack up and move to the next person. Um, their model has the nurse doing the vaccine uh, cold chain control and all of the uh, prep mod or whatever the vaccination uh, data entry is. And then the paramedics are providing the actual vaccination. That's their model. Uh, and they find it working well for them locally. Uh, Lisa White, the public health nurse uh, here, has worked and instituted a plan for homebound vaccination. So those started two days ago, I think, um, and their model is actually a lot leaner. Um, they are just sending one nurse out to the houses as they have them, and they're just doing everything singularly, and they are not... Uh, doing as many people, um, not as closely together, not hour to hour to hour, but um, they're they're splintering out. So one person will go this way in the county, another person will go that way. And I know today there was one person they were doing, I believe it was South Deerfield, Conway, Buckland, Charlemont. That was like their route. Uh, and they've got it worked out. Uh, they are alerting Shelmer Control and the local EMS agencies beforehand of their plan. They're not giving us the addresses, but just an awareness. Hey, we're out there and they are carrying EpiPens, defibrillators, uh, those things that are necessary. And if they have an issue, then they can just call for whatever the local ambulance resource is. Uh, that, that is working well right now. Uh, Lisa and for the FERCOG knows that South County is here to support them uh, in any way that we can. It just didn't makes sense for us to be integrating with them at this point because it was just going to slow them down uh, in getting that uh, underway. So that is happening locally um, and will continue to happen locally. Uh, there was also a question I wanted to touch base on this um, just for people's own edification. Uh, paramedics are authorized in Massachusetts to provide vaccine uh, administration. The catch to that is that the regulations are such that for a paramedic to do it, we must be working as a paramedic for a licensed ambulance service. So unlike the way a doctor, um, a licensed nurse, somebody like that can volunteer their time, we can only do it as an employee of the ambulance service. Um, so there was a question about as we need to vaccinate more and more people, the, the governor of Massachusetts has already released uh, their plans for um, the next phases. You know, like, was it everybody 16 and older will be able to um, get a vaccine coming up pretty soon? Uh, I've spoken with the FERCOG. I said, you know, we are, we are here. We are a resource. 
Um, but as long as they have these MRC volunteers that have the capacity to do it, it seems the most sense right now where we stand on March 18th, 2021, um, that we will remain our primary role as staffing ambulances and being able to respond to EMS calls. And then they will have volunteers providing the vaccinations. If that changes coming up, um, then we can mobilize for that. But that is why uh, in Franklin County, you don't see paramedics providing vaccinations. Uh, down in Hampshire County, in the city of Northampton, their model is that they're having Northampton paramedics provide those vaccinations, that they have determined that paying those paramedics to do that in their five days off between their 24-hour shifts makes the most sense for them. They have the capacity to offer that overtime to those employees in between their regular shifts. Um, and here at South County, we're so small that we're just staffed to cover our regular ambulance shifts and we don't have that same flexibility in staffing they do. So we're not doing it now, not to say that it isn't an option in the future. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Tom, you had brought up the question, I think like a week or two ago about homebound vaccinations. Those started, uh, two or three days ago and are happening right now with a model that Lisa White developed. So people are receiving homebound vaccinations and I've coordinated with her. We are not integrating with her at this time to do it with paramedics, um, but she knows that's an option if it needs to happen. So just to recap that. So who, who uh, she work with? Zach, who's she working with? She's got her cadre of uh, nurse volunteers from the MRC and it's Pathways, which is coordinating the actual list of people in need. So Pathways has the ability to do all that administrative back end. And Lisa is taking and doing the actual operations of providing the vaccines with her volunteers. Good deal. Um, and then let's see. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Budget. So the latest uh, South County budget went out. It's dated March 15th, 2021. It's version 5.0. Um, and I think this is probably where it's going to settle. Uh, the changes in this version from the last version are, we got the um, specific numbers from the town of Deerfield as far as the employee benefit costs go. So we've got those drilled in. Um, uh, I'm getting better at, I think they each one went down just a teeny bit. I'm getting better at uh, estimating those though. Um, also salaries were adjusted. I didn't have any guidance initially. Now, uh, as town of Deerfoot employees, the guidance I received was, um, the customary step for all the full-time employees, but no cost of living adjustment. And anybody that is currently maxed out, we've got a couple of people that have been with the department almost 20 years now, um, who's maxed out in the step. They would, I've budgeted for a 1%, um, COLA for them, basically. So they, they're not getting a step. They would get 1%. The other employees would get um, a step. So that line on the budget is down from the previous versions. The previous versions, I don't know what to put in. So I think it was a 2% COLA or something like that. So that is down. Also, we got the um, calculation back for the Deerfield indirect costs and uh, OPEB, and that is also down. That is down uh, $4,500. Um, I was told that has to do with some sort of lack of capital expenditures that occurred last year, and because it's calculated on last year's budget, um, the lack of capital expense brought that down. Um, so that also brought the budget down. Um, that means that the very bottom line of this year's budget um, is slightly up from last year. It's up just over 3%. Um, but I want to point out to everybody that last year's budget went down by almost eight and a half percent. So we had a, a very precipitous drop for last year's budget. Um, and even though technically it's up from last year, we're actually still trending down over time that, that we're getting a little bit of this, but we're finding our our even keel on what our expenditures are over time. We're, we're averaging out and it's still decreasing. So um, uh, that is that on the budget. Those have been forwarded out to the three towns. I think 
think everybody's seen it. I've gotten confirmation that everybody's seen it. And I've got uh, Deerfield and Waitley Finance Committees um, next month, the 30th and the 6th, respectively. Um, I don't have a, a date yet for Sunderland, but that, that won't be an issue whenever Sunderland wants to hear from me directly. I will be available for that. Any questions on the budget? Sounds like you got a pretty good handle on it. Um, that was it for the director's report. I've got a little piece of uh, unanticipated business that just come up in the past two days. Um, and that is our write-offs. Um, I, I must apologize. I've been remiss. I haven't been going back through our write-offs and applying our write-off policy the way um, that it's designed. I've been letting those things kind of sit for like the past year and haven't had the time to sit down and I haven't delegated that to anybody else. That's, that's my fault. Um, that number is getting larger. I was quoted like a $900,000 amount. I want to remind everybody, this is nature of medical billing that um, we're not allowed to bill uh, different amounts to different people. That is discrimination and illegal. So every, we have a standard rate that we charge everybody. Um, and then when a patient has Medicare and Medicaid, that is the government and the government says, we're not going to pay you that amount. You're going to get a third of it and you're going to like it. And so what happens is we, we then write off that last two thirds um, that we will never collect. Um, so, this so is, Zach, how, how do you, how do you, how do we get that off the book? So, so in order to, I, I just want to finish my thought. Our budgeting for reimbursements takes that into account. So it's not like we are coming up short on what our estimations are for revenue. We are right on track where we estimate this is just a, like a clerical accounting thing we need to do. So the way that we get this off the books is we have a write-off policy um, that was passed by the South County EMS Board of Oversight a year or two ago. And it's basically just a flow chart. It is to be as objective as possible. And it uh, breaks things out, you know, is the debt greater than six years? Is the debt less than $150? Is the debt um, to like a minor, like under 16 or under 18, things like that, depending on what category uh, the, um, the, the debt falls under, we have different, the policy is either we write it off, we report it to um, the credit reporting bureau. And we also have the collections agencies options now for people that um, can pay and just don't uh, are unwilling to. So the first step will be for me and somebody I delegated to, we can get a scrubbed list of overdue accounts from Comstar with the names removed. It's just the balance, the date, the remaining balance, and the reason why it wasn't collected um, or received by us. We'll go through it. We'll apply the formula. There will be a good chunk of that. We'll just will be written off just because of that. It's that Medicare stuff um, that we were anticipating. Um, we'll bring those numbers to the Board of Oversight. I imagine the Board of Oversight will just vote to write it off, hand it off to the Town of Deerfield. And because we're a Town of Deerfield department, uh, the select board in the Town of Deerfield will have to vote to just write it off and then just get it off the books. Right now it's just sitting on the books and it doesn't need to be there and um, it's, it's muddying things up. So um, we'll do that. There will be a portion of um, like those fringe cases where, you know, either it'll go to collections or it won't. Um, if anything falls out of our policy as written, those will be just handled separately again with, um, you know, scrubbing of names or things like that. Um, we have a separate policy for people who can't pay, who can't afford to pay for whatever reason that is handled separately. Um, per our policy. And uh, those people are um, are not just sent to collections or anything like that. We do show deference to those people. Well, did that, that answer? That's what, that's what we used to do, Zach. We used to, actually we did it differently in Sunderland. We used to let the uh, EMS director in Sunderland used to take care of that. We The select board didn't even want to be involved with it. That, that's way, you know, way too personal and it, okay. it just didn't make it didn't make sense for us to get involved in that. Yeah, um, I think um, somebody 
uh, somebody who's not at the meeting right now thought that uh, administratively, I guess, what maybe it should just be voted on. Like, you know, I would provide the bottom line number. I would say it, we have whatever, $150,000 that need to be written off per policy, all in favor, aye, and then it would be forward, was my understanding. I'll coordinate with um, with our town accountant and the Deerfield Select Board to figure out exactly, that, that's this is new to me, exactly what that process needs to be. Yeah, so, so we're doing it legally. If you, if you want, talk to Bobby, because Bobby used to do it with us, right, Bobby? And and yeah. I, and, and it's better for the, it's better for the, it's, again, it takes, it takes the, personal thing for select it takes it out let's put it this way it takes it takes it out of the clinical realm it lets it lets the professionals take care of the professional stuff you know sounds good uh that's it for everything i wanted to talk about tom jeff got any questions for zach or um i i, I guess that you know, you know, you've been at the uh, your people have been covering at the uh, um, City Tree Brewing, right, or whatever. What are we, is it City uh, Tree? Treehouse. You might have, you might have yeah, yeah, first, yeah. Treehouse. Treehouse Brewing. Yeah, you guys have been there covering, um, and and that's good. Um, and you were probably there Wednesday, and you're gonna be there Saturday as well. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, yep, we will. Yeah, we'll continue to be there. It's a it's a paramedic level crew. Um, the people that are signing up for those shifts really enjoy it. They like being there. We've had a number of um, we haven't transported anybody away. Um, nobody with a medical emergency. We've had a couple people get a little lightheaded or things like that. That's stuff that they're familiar with. You know, they, every time they get a shot, they get a little lightheaded. Um, and uh but but that's about it. It's been it's been very successful. We've got a number of dates coming up, and I think the shots yesterday and the Saturday are all the Johnson and Johnson, so they're all one shot. So that's great. Mm -hmm. We don't have to we don't have to reschedule people coming in back. They can do they can come in, and that is a effect an effective uh, vaccine. Um, a hundred percent. Um, I would get it. Um, it's it's nothing to if you have an opportunity to get the Johnson and Johnson, you shouldn't pause or worry that it's not as effective. I, I, I hear, um, I talked, I was talking to Linda Dunlavy the other day and she was mentioning that she, um, and the FERCOG is really looking forward to be doing drive-throughs. So that, that, that is the next, that's the next big thing. And, and, and I, we kind of talked and I talked to her and I said, well, you know, in, in South County, we, we could do. 700 people in four hours with drive through. Um, I, I said, you know, so if you're only doing one shot, you, we could probably, we, we, we can probably hit that number. And I said, you know, just like for, for the, um, the one in Deerfield and, and the, the other ones that are run out through the county that uses the MRC, you know, we, we cut down like 10, a number like 10, 10 volunteers because we weren't scheduling that second shot. So it's a much more, it's a much more streamlined service and it really lends itself well for the end car. You know, the Johnson Johnson the drive, lends itself very well to the drive through. So, and, and, you know, if we did an eight, if we did an eight hour clinic, we could push 800, you know, I'm e easily 800 to a thousand people easily, if, if not way more. So. Do they still have to wait? Yes. The Johnson and Johnson. Yep. Okay. But we, but you know, Bobby, what what we would do is we, we would just park them, you know, and 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 we would have you know the guys with the blue lights on the cars, and if someone tried to leave early, we just have the guys with the blue lights pull them over, you know. They could they can make somebody wait at least 15, 20 minutes very easily, you know. <laughs> when you turn those group, by the time the cop get out of the car and you know get over to talk to them. They, that's, you know, 15 minutes goes by real slow if you're sitting in that car with the blue lights on you. So. Yeah. But, uh, and, and again, so so Linda Dunlevy was, was you know, I, I think, and what she was saying, because it was last Thursday, is, and I don't know what you've been hearing, Zach, but they were saying that the vaccine should start coming in a lot 
um, a lot more. We should be seeing a lot more of it very soon. So, yeah, and I think even um, President Biden just today said he was going that he they're doubling their estimations. He wanted something like a million doses in the first uh, however many weeks, and he's going to get two instead. That just they've been able to rally and um, and just based on that information, the governor has put out when the next phases are something they they couldn't and were unwilling to do before because they just didn't know what that availability was going to be. And now they're confident. They're like, yeah, we can we can march this out four weeks from now that we'll be able to do those phases. Then I think I think it's great. I think it's really good. Well, and, and I think I, I think if, if we if we should be telling people, look, register. I, I just said I just read something about uh, stop and shop now getting getting into the uh, being able to give vaccines, so that they're up to start giving vaccines. CVS has been a, um, a very good to get vaccines also. And in you know, if you go on to the uh, to the state site, and you can now sign up, put your name on the waiting list, and they'll notify you. But that doesn't stop you from searching out the other things. The FERCOG, F, you know, frcog.org. Um, Vax Finder, if you see something for Franklin County, um, your, your doctor, if you talk to your doctor, he may be able to get you. I've had two guys at work that doctors were able to get them into different places. So, I mean, it is getting it is getting closer to being able more where you can just get the vaccine when, you're, when your age or group is called. So, I think that's good. That's very good. Keep up the good work, Zach. Trying. I think it's going well. Got a good team here. So um, that's it for me. All right. It was a short and sweet meeting. Sure was. Wasn't even a meeting though, right? No, no, not quorum, really. But all right.